Hi. In this topic, we're going to dive deep into the section of describing Cisco Iowa software architectures, but specifically, we're going to be looking at container and VM architectures. So when we start looking at the 64-bit versions of iOS XR software, we have actually two slightly different variations, uh, and it depends on what kind of hardware we're running. So when we look at the VM-based systems, and again, these are going to be the ones like the ASR9000 and the NCS6000. So we actually are running full virtual machines, and those are the ones we see uh, here on the right. So, and what this means is we're actually running full versions of Linux. And here you can see maybe our host, but then we also have additional versions of Linux running in here. So we're actually nesting VMs one inside the other. And again, th that is fine. Linux and the specific versions of Linux we're running fairly uh, compact and th that works but it's not the most ideal scenario. We're not taking advantage necessarily of all of the tools and resources we have available to us. That is when we have the container-based iOS XR systems. And again, this is really based on what kind of hardware, what kind of CPUs are we running these on. So when we start looking at the container-based XR systems, and again, this is where we're looking at ones like the NCS 5500, NCS 5000, so these, we have Linux containers. And what you can see here is, yes, we have our host OS, but notice we're not running another layer of operating system between our containers and the host OS. So containers uh, are a wholly self-contained, separated space within the operating system. So we're not having to boot up another version. We're not nesting one VM inside the next like we are with the virtual machine-based systems. So we're able to reuse a lot of those same internal components, the same kernel, the same OS, and they use the same, a lot of the same DLLs. But most importantly, because of the use of things like namespace and groups, we're able to have them separate. So which means that one Linux container, unless we configure it explicitly to do so, cannot communicate with another container. They are separate. So this allows us to keep things separate and provide some security there as well. And again, the key thing down here, lightweight. So because we're not having to boot up an entire another version of a virtual machine, we're actually able to do this very quickly. So these are lightweight, they boot up real quickly, so we're, we're, we're taking advantage of all those tools that running a Linux-based host OS affords us. Now, again, here's some of the things we were just talking about. So uh, Linux containers and VMs, they both provide that hardware abstraction. So which means that the hardware abstraction just means that, yeah, we, we can run this on different models of hardware, be it an NCS 5000, 5500, or even the ASR 9000, NCS 6000. So we're able to abstract that, which means we're running the same operating system on different kinds of hardware. So this is something very common in PCs for, for in servers for years and years. So this means that we're able to have the same operating system. We're not having to customize the majority of the uh, operating system on a per platform basis. So, which means we gain that stability that we have across the entire suite of products because of the similarities between the different hardware platforms in XR. All right. Now, one of the other things here is each instance has its own file system. So again, we talked about some of those different aspects, so uh, namespace and grouping. So we're able to have their own file system. So again, one container may not necessarily talk to the other and the like. And then again, isolation between instances. So this is really important because what happens if we have a misbehaving application or a misbehaving process? Well, that means that could actually impact things like our RAM, CPU, our I.O. So because we can do these quotas on these and maintain separation, it's almost like QoS in networking. It means that a misbehaving application is not going to impact everything. So this is really important and allows for additional stability. All right. So now when we start looking at what the different um, containers and VMs that we're running, so what we have here is we've got two major components, two major VMs. 
So we have our control plane, and then we have our admin plane. So the control plane. So when you are working in the CLI, when you start typing show commands, when you start typing config or config T, this is what you are normally experiencing, is your control plane. So, and again, you can see here all the major network function packages, BGP, MPLS, things like OSPF, ISIS, those all run in that control plane, as the name implies. Control plane, how am I controlling how traffic flows across the network? So by routing protocols, for instance. But we also have a few things, a few uh, standard Linux tools and libraries. So again, we're running Linux on this. So we're going to take advantage of the fact we're running Linux and give us these extra tools like Bash, Python, TCP dump. So we have those extra tools available to us. So we're going to use them when possible. Now, the admin plane VM, you can see here, it's more diagnostic based. And it's more the care and feeding of the local router itself. So that is really where we're starting looking at, hey, is this process misbehaving? Um, is there something on the router that's misbehaving? Now, one of the advantages to running either a VM-based system or a container-based system is we can run third-party containers. So in here, you can see we have this third party running in here. So this means that we can install additional software on a router. Now, the use cases for this tend to be things related to network management or network performance. Those are the most common scenarios. Um, yes, you could technically run almost any kind of Linux um, distribution in here and do any number of different tasks. But realistically, I mean, these are routers. We, we're, they're not designed to be servers. So we want the normal operation to not be impacted by whatever we may run in this third-party container. So again, the bulk of third-party containers are typically related to the, the network functionality as well. All right. Now, we've just seen that we have quite a few different either operating systems or portions of the router uh, when we're running iOS XR 64-bit. So what we want to do is say, well, great. Well, how do I get into these different components? So if I want to just access the control plane, so I'm wanting to be able to do, go in and do a show command, look at the BGP routing, OSPF routing. Well, that's our control plane VM or container. And here you can see, yeah, it's our standard like console or even SSH, Telnet, over our standard ports. So in this case, SSH port 22. So that gives us access to our control plane. Now, if we want to actually look at the underlying OS that that is running on top of, well, from within the control plane, we can actually issue the run command. And that actually drops us down into the Linux guest operating system. So we're able to start looking at that. And again, typically you would do this in the event that you're troubleshooting router performance or something local on the router. Now, again, we have access locally if we use run, but also, yes, we can set up SSH. And the default port is 57.722. So again, you have to manually turn these on. There, with iOS XR being a very secure operating system, very few things are turned on by default. You have to turn a lot of these things on. And this is uh, true here as well. Now, if we're trying to access the admin plane VM or container, well, from our normal control plane, we can issue the admin command. And again, that gives us the ability to start looking at, at specific admin functions. Admin functions, again, are typically care and feeding of the local router. So if we put all this together and kind of compare uh, a block diagram over here with our RP on the right with what does the actual CLI prompt look like? So and then we have that on the left. So when we actually first log into the router, we, we are typically logging into our control plane. So when we log into the control plane, we normally get just the pound sign. So we have that, and that's our normal state within a iOS XR when we first log in. Now, if we want to access, say, our con control plane guest OS, so and again, that would be this one here we can actually issue the run command. And you can see how the prompt changes. So we actually drop down into that guest OS. 
All right. Now, we also have some other options. So here you can see if we type exit, we get back to our control plane. And then we can actually run bash. And from bash, notice that we're also basically going into the Linux shell for our guest OS as well. Now, we also have our admin. So in here you can see the admin VM or container. And there we simply access it via the admin keyword. So again, iOS XR 64-bit, slightly different from the 32-bit version. In 32-bit version, you needed to get into the admin mode a little more frequently. That's not true as often with the 64-bit version, but you do still need occasionally get in there to, to make changes. So that is something to keep in mind, that the admin keyword still works. All right, now from within the admin mode, if you type run, almost identical to what we did up here at the top, so it drops us again into our guest OS. So we can access the guest OS from either the XR control plane VM or the admin VM. Uh, so we can access those guest OSs simply by typing run. Uh, if you ever need to access the host OS, it is possible, not recommended. So uh, that, that is typically related to more software upgrades outside of the scope of normal everyday software updates. So because we do still have the ability to run just our standard uh, upgrades straight from our uh, no longer admin VM, we can actually do it directly from our XR VM as now, now as well. So with that, thank you very much for watching this topic.